In this video, I am going to be talking about the most recent substance that I have been experimenting with, which is ketamine. Now, within the past couple of weeks, I gained access to pure ketamine, and I took this as a sort of as a sort of stepping tool, a stepping stone to researching what ketamine is, because over the past couple of years, I've heard about it. I've heard about uh, the K-hole phenomenon, how it's popular in festival and rave culture. It's a dissociative anesthetic, uh, synthetic drug found in 1963 as a replacement for fencyclidine or PCP, which was overly hallucinogenic in regards to using it as an anesthetic for patients. <laughs> and I began just researching about what this compound was because now that I was able to gain access to it, I was considering trying it. I was considering adding it to my collection of psychonautic exploration tools. So after doing the research on the chemical, I became quite fascinated in what it is, in the, the kind of experiences it can bring about, the duration of action that it brings, which is within, within the span of one to three hours, dependent on the dose that is taken and the route of administration that it is taken in. And it just began to fascinate me, the, the different aspects of the ketamine experience. So I got myself some ketamine in the form of crystal rocks, which were to be insufflated. And just to mention, I have never insufflated my substances. I've always kind of had a bias towards it, like insufflation makes you look like a junkie. It's not healthy. There's better ways to get it in your body than that. I preferably like smoking or eating. But after a while, I began to see this is how I get this substance in my body. It is the most bioavailable way of administering it next to intravenous injection, which I'm not gonna, I'm not fucking with needles. So I saw insufflation is the way to go. This is how I get it in my body to experience it. So I'm going to do it as such. So now that I've kind of talked about why I wanted to, I'm gonna talk about my experiences with it. So as you know, Ketamine is a dissociative anesthetic, and at higher doses, it becomes somewhat of a hallucinogenic, which is where the K-hole experience comes about. And I have always been interested in dissociatives. I've tried nitrous oxide, and to be honest, was quite underwhelmed and unsatisfied with the effects of it. It seemed to just be this disorienting feeling for a few moments that didn't really stand any ground in the sense of conscious travel. So I was really hoping that ketamine was a better representation of what I believe to be a dissociative, which is it disconnected you from your feelings and your thoughts and pulled you away from who you think you are and kind of just puts you in this void of experience. And just to say in the beginning, ketamine was very much more interesting and dead on with what I classify a dissociative as than nitrous was. So to get on to my experience, experiments with it, I spent about a week using this substance where I would use it one night in a very small amount, wait a day, use it another night in a, in a larger amount. And through the first week I did this I'd say three or four times until we reached about the weekend. And through that week, what I was experiencing off of these tiny little insufflations of the ketamine was a, a, a sensation very similar to that of a light alcohol buzz, where when you move your head around it and stop, it feels like things are still moving, or you stand up, and the room just doesn't seem like it's in the right position. You were walking all kind of like lopsided and not very intense, but at those times I was going, okay, this is the onset, the threshold of the ketamine experience. Um, and I slowly worked my way into it more and more until the weekend where I planned I was going to take a large amount and go quite deep descent into the ketamine realm. So I'm going to talk about how much I would generally take 
and then the experience that would come about almost every time from that dosage. So what I would do is I would insufflate a little bit, wait about 10 to 20 minutes for the, the buzzing sensation to come on, which is to me about how long it would take for that a new initial dose to peak. It takes about 20, 25 minutes and then it's in and on. At that point, I would take just a little bit more and then wait another duration, maybe 30, 45 minutes, because as you increase the dosages, the effects stack on top of each other quite, quite intensely actually, and will last much longer. So by the third insufflation is where I would usually be good in terms of intensity and what was going on. And that's what I want to try to talk about in this, in this description right here is what that experience I was having was like. So to begin, I want to first talk about the stare, the fucking stare that it brings about. So by this third insufflation, I'm hanging out with my brother, by the way, we're playing video games, shooting the shit, talking, listening to music, and at this point, three insufflations in, I am, I am overcome with this just drone of, of uh, a lack of focus on anything where I find myself staring for 5, 10, 15 minutes on end without moving a single muscle. I don't even know if I would be blinking, but I would just be staring and I would be thinking, but it was like I wasn't the one thinking. It was just going on and I'm like, oh, okay, okay, uh huh. And I could direct my thoughts, but there was this feeling of a, a, a lack of concern with what was going on, a lack of, like, I didn't want to express anything. I didn't want to try to think or try to say something or try to even do anything. I was just sitting there and everything is happening as it is and it would just get very, very quiet, very simple. My brother's talking to me, I'm hearing him talk to me and I hear what my mind says in return and I say it. I say it because that's how the conversation goes on, right? And it was just this very weird disconnection from, I guess, my ego, meaning the, the one who expresses who I am, that does the things I do and says the things I say and thinks the way I think. It seemed like under the influence of this ketamine experience, the urge to express myself was muted and died away. And I remember me and my brother would get in a sort of tense conversation about something where I didn't understand what he was saying or he didn't understand me, one or the other, because he was tripping on LSD that night. And I felt this spike of, of, of kind of anxiety of, oh shit, I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know how to go on with this conversation. And then I would be struck with the realization, it doesn't matter. Why, why, are you, why are you stressing about trying to express yourself? And that was really the beginning of me realizing that it kind of dulls that thing in you that urges to express who it is. And to me, that was a very dissociative thing, to not want to express yourself. Now. Next thing I want to talk about is the physical sensations of the experience itself, which were quite intense and much more prominent, like a, a high, than compared to psychedelics that I have tried in the past. So the physical sensations of these ketamine experiences, it always tended to be this sort of heavy buzzing, a heavy buzzing through my body. Um, there would be a deep numbing sensation like Novocaine in my arms and legs and especially in my face and cheeks and lips. It would just feel like numb to the touch. And most of the ketamine physical uh, effects come around from moving, from moving around during the peak of it, which is 
I, I would get up to go to the bathroom or get a drink of water or switch my position and everything just felt like it was like like fucking lopsided I'm like leaning back and then stepping my foot down and looking all around and like don't walk around on ketamine especially when you're in a deep dose range because you lose control of your motor skills and you can't coordinate things correctly similar to alcohol but it was definitely different a lot more mysterious in nature than the alcohol experience which I have had a few times myself but I'm typically not too interested in it but I could compare the ketamine physical effects to a little bit of alcohol mixed with maybe a DMT come up where like not as intense as the DMT can get but just this feeling of mystery this feeling of mystery and of I guess acceptance of what's going on it was a very it was a very strange feeling but it was pleasurable especially when laying down it would just kind of wash over you like this blanket you wouldn't be moving you'd be just in your head watching TV and this feeling of just rushing warmth and tingling is over you and it like I said it's not negative it's not a dysphoric feeling it's actually very euphoric if you pay attention to it so now that I've talked about the physical effects of it I want to talk a little bit about the mental effects of the ketamine and then a little bit more on my personal experiences with using it as in ritual for conscious travel conscious exploration because I will admit this weekend of experimenting with the ketamine was just to see what it was like just to get myself on it and see how it feels see if it I don't react well to it see if I'm a some I don't like it right off you know stuff like that before I considered using it as a tool for conscious exploration but before I get into that I want to talk about the mental effects that it brought about so ketamine similar to the DMT experience but nowhere near as intense seems to leave your mind alone it seems to leave your thought processes alone as the experience comes on and this could be seen as dangerous because you're you're you're, you're coherent you're very coherent until you get to the point where you can't even move you know so you may be tempted to think you're not that under the influence of it when in reality you are you've you're just still in coherency with your thought streams now I didn't notice much disorientation of the thoughts but what I did notice is that ketamine shreds my concepts very similar to the way that cannabis does where if I take a high dose of cannabis and I'm watching TV or out in public or doing whatever I am everything is fucking hilarious everything is fucking hilarious and deep and sad and stupid or whatever whatever theme it has it is a massive exaggeration of that theme and during those ketamine trips I was having watching TV or playing video games things were just fucking hilarious the thoughts that were going through my head were just completely silly completely backwards from how I usually think I'm thinking of these weird ass scenarios in my head and I'm laughing at them and not knowing how I thought of them and I found that also interesting in terms in in similarities to the psychedelics where it just begins putting in these thoughts and seeing how you react to them or not even really caring how you react to them it's just sending in all this data so it did have the ability to deteriorate my con my thought streams and my concepts and I found that quite interesting but what I found most interesting about this ketamine overall is when I took it in a high dose while meditating that was quite the experience so what happened when I did that is I insufflated a little bit and I waited about 20 minutes for it to come on and then I insufflated a little bit more, a larger amount, 
and then sat down in lotus. And I began to follow the breath and focus on my breath because that is my, my, my form of meditation. So I began doing that, focusing on my breath and going with the breath and I was feeling the physical effects of the ketamine coming on and it would pull my awareness away from the breath but I would go back to it. <coughs> and at one point, it got to the point where I forgot why I was watching the breath. The breath is still there, up, down, up, down. But there is no context to why I am watching this breath or, or if I'm even watching it. And then this thought comes rolling back in, pay attention to the breath. And I think, I am. Well, where just was I in my head? In this experience of of chosen focus, but a, a, a loss of unconscious focus, I guess is the best way to put it, started coming over me where I'm focusing on my breath, but I'm not choosing to anymore. And it's just, I'm watching it in, out, in, out. And there's not really a watch it, keep on it, keep on it, like there kind of is during typical meditation. It was just more, here's my breath, look what it's doing and it became a focal point. And then, then I began having a very, very vivid imagination. Very similar, and this is what really sparked my interest with the ketamine, very similar to that of the way that DMT enhances one's imagination as well, where a lot of what you believe you are seeing on the DMT experience is actually an internalized imagination that has been v being projected and it's much more vivid and detailed and able to be perceived and it's coming right out of your fucking head whether you're thinking about it or not this really weird imaginative scenario is just bursting at the seams of your mind and this is, I began to see this imaginative scenario on the ketamine while I was meditating. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I saw, what I saw. So I think the first thing I did, the first thing I did is I moved my head. And when I moved my head, just the littlest bit, it felt like my whole fucking world was flying backwards. <laughs> And it wasn't negative, it wasn't nauseating, but it, it was very intense, like, holy shit, I am moving right now. And I open my eyes, and I'm looking at my altar in front of me, which is where I sit when I meditate. And I'm, I have the stare going, where I'm just staring, not, not controlling the thoughts or anything else. And it appears that everything in my vision, all the objects on my table, are moving together and then resetting. And then moving apart and then resetting. And I couldn't really pick up on the ways that they were moving, but I knew they're moving right now. And this is in a very mechanical like way where it would be weird like movements of the objects that I'm seeing. So once I realized that shit, I'm having visuals on this shit right now, which I knew usually doesn't come until the deeper dose ranges, I shut my eyes because I wanted to see if there was any sort of closed eye hallucinations. And very quickly I begin seeing lights, these moving lights. And the best way I could describe it is these two lines shot across my vision like this. And then all of a sudden I see this thing that it looks like a heartbeat monitor, but it's going a lot faster and it races across that line. And I see it like jitter across the line and slowly fade into the distance. And then what I see is this huge transformer robot like fucking guy that was personified to be a guy. And he was taking his fist and punching this huge brick wall. And when he punched the brick wall, I came flying out of the other side, holding on to these monkey bar-like things that were whipping around in circles. And I fell off this cliff and I could no longer see myself anymore. And I, I, think, I think that's 
all of what I of really what I can recall of seeing in that deep meditative ketamine trance but it fucking sparked my interest for sure it was very interesting when I when I try a new substance I'm not interested in things I call feel gooders the the uppers the downers like what kind of even names are those you know I'm I'm interested in the things that tweak my imagination that that perplex me with concepts that that anticipate new perspectives and change the way you feel and gives you a space to work on yourself and the world and what you make of it while on that substance psychedelics nail that definition De nitrous oxide not really not really it was so short and underwhelming it didn't really serve any any benefits in that in that regard to me ketamine I do need some more time to work with it, but I see ben I see benefit in this. I see potential is the word I was looking for. I see potential in using ketamine to enter a space of self-reflection and an alteration of one's perspectives and thoughts and and the way you feel about things. And like I said, I still have a lot to work on with ketamine before I really go, yeah, that's a good one. But it was very interesting. It was a very interesting substance. I think I've talked about most of what I have collected off of this substance. And I hope you got something out of it. And I will be back with more. So thank you for watching.